Hey everyone, my name is Nolan. Welcome back to another All the Mods 10 guide video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you could set up wireless networks for your applied energistic system. So basically, you can use terminals, wireless terminals to access your system from wherever you are even across dimensions, and then also how you can organize your applied energistics controller so that way you don't have a ton of dense cables coming out of it. You could just set up a wireless connector and connect to, to wherever you would like. So by the end of the playthrough, you can have like a ton of controllers like this, which are really organized and you don't get lost through all the dense cables. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to get is a matter condenser. As you can see, it's pretty cheap for glass, some iron and fluix dust. Then go ahead and place it down on the ground. Next up, you're going to get these fluid pipes from the pipes mod specifically because you can upgrade them to be really fast. And you're going to place one down on each of these sides and then connect sinks on all four of these ends. Get your configurator from the mechanism mod and make sure that it is pulling from the sink and then right click on the pulling spot and add a ultimate pipe upgrade to each of these pipes. Okay, now get yourself a 256 storage component and place it into the matter condenser. Now from here, you can do two things. You can instantly go to a matter ball generator or you can go to a singularity generator, but it just takes a little bit more time. If time is of concern to you and you want to be generating a lot of singularities, what you can do is set up a reaction chamber. On top of the reaction chamber, place down a mechanical pipe, then have a one block gap between a block of dripstone and that mechanical pipe, then place down an extractor. Now on top of the dripstone, you're going to be placing lava. So have some blocks available to in order to contain that lava. Now this generates lava pretty slowly. So if you guys don't have like an infinite lava source or a way of getting lava fast, you're going to want to expand this out by any amount. It doesn't really matter just to wherever you're getting a comfortable amount of lava per tick. Go ahead and put some acceleration cards in here and then go ahead and connect it to some form of power. So this method is going to be faster than just generating straight singularities. However, it's going to take lava and it's going to take a lot of power. So if you don't have an excess of both, just go ahead and stick to the slower method. But for now, I'm going to show you how you can do the faster method. Go ahead and take some item pipes and just throw them on over into the reaction chamber. So I'm going to make this matter balls. And as you can see, the matter balls are being thrown in here and we are getting singularities way faster than if we just did it the other way. But again, we have to rely on lava. So for the sake of this video, we are not going to need this many singularities. However, down the road, you will end up needing a lot. But for now, we don't need that much. Okay, now you're going to need to place a tiny TNT on the ground. They're really easy to get. Throw two singularities next to the tiny TNT and then two ender pearls next to the tiny TNT. And then go ahead and ignite it. Now I got two sets of quantum entangled singularities. It is important to know which ones are bound to each other because these singularities are going to be how you connect wirelessly. So for the next, so for this next part, we're going to need a wireless setup kit. So go ahead and create crafting recipes for all these ingredients. And then we're going to need two wireless connectors. We already went over how to get intro ingots and extended machine frames in a previous episode. If you want to see how to get like power, set up a network or any previous tutorials, make sure to check the playlist playlist down in the description. So as previously discussed, each of these uh, enemy controller faces will give 32 outputs. If you want to wirelessly connect to these faces, what you're going to do is throw down a wireless connector onto a face and then right click it with your uh, ME wireless setup kit. Now, basically, wherever you put this and then connect it using this setup kit, you will get 32 outputs from any of the faces on this wireless controller. Now, there is a range limit. I'm not too sure what the range limit is. However, around my base, I've never reached that range limit. So. It should be pretty far, but I'm not too sure. Okay, now that I've showed you how to connect to a network wirelessly, how do you connect to a network across dimensions? Well, from what I've experimented, this only actually works in the overworld, like if your main network is in the overworld. So take two more wireless connectors and connect it to your ME controller, just like I showed you already. And I already have a spot where I set up all my cross dimension connections. So pretty easy for me to set up. Make sure that when you set up multiple rings next to each other, there is a block in between them. Otherwise, uh, they'll break. So yeah, I'm going to set my wireless connector down here, connect it. And then I'm going to place down my eight quantum rings like this. Then I'm going to place a quantum link chamber in the middle. Okay, now I'm going to place one of my singularity pairs inside of this chamber. And now I'm going to go back to the mining dimension. And I'm going to set up another quantum ring with a singularity in the middle. And if I place a singularity inside here, you can see the device comes online. 
and I can export the 32 channels from any of these four faces that touch the link chamber. Keep in mind that you don't get 32 per face, you get 32 total. So wherever you export from here, you will have 32 total channels. All right, now let's set up a wireless terminal. So inside of this network, I have these items. I got some iron, lapis, gold, and wood. So if I wanna be able to access those from anywhere, we need to set up another quantum ring that somehow connects to the ME network. Now device is online, so I'm gonna put the singularity inside of there. And I'm gonna actually hope this works from setting this up in the mining dimension because I've only ever tried this from setting it up <laughs> in the overworld. Now you need to set up a wireless access point. Uh, make sure to just set up recipes for all these items so you don't have to keep crafting them over and over. I'm gonna connect it to one of these faces right here. Now this wireless access point is where we're gonna throw our wireless terminals into so we can link it to our system. So first craft a wireless terminal. You can see it's pretty decently expensive, but just set up a crafting recipe. It's not too bad, you just need this stuff. Once you have that, you can combine it with a calculation processor and a crafting table to get a wireless crafting terminal, which is the important one. That's what you want. Now go ahead and take that and put it in your inventory. And as you can see, mine charges because I have wireless power set up. I'll probably make a separate video on how to get wireless power, but you can also just charge your system using the charger from Applied Energistics. It'll take a while, but it's still effective. Now to link it to your network, open your wireless access point and put it in here and it will link. Now we need to upgrade this quite a bit. The first thing we need to do is make a quantum bridge card. It's kind of expensive. Here is the recipe to make the quantum bridge card. Open your wireless terminal and place the quantum bridge card in the side over here, and then place the other singularity uh, from previous the previous step into the slot up here. Now you should be able to use this terminal across dimensions, almost. We need to make something called an infinity range booster. It's not too expensive, it just looks like this. The wireless booster looks like this. Once you have that infinity booster, go ahead and put it into your wireless connection point. Now we can test this out by going back to the overworld. And if I open my crafting terminal, I can see all my stuff. Awesome. Now what you can also do is make a pattern encoding terminal and a pattern access terminal. And from any crafting table or whatever, you can combine these terminals together so you can have all three from one terminal. So now if I right click, you can see I have all my items, but then I also have pattern encoding. I have my assembler access and then just the regular crafting here. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Now you can access your system from really, really far away. I can go to the nether and I can still access my system like this. So yeah, it's really not that difficult, but it's really important and will make things so much easier for you. So yeah, if you found this video tutorial helpful, make sure to smash the like and subscribe for more All The Mods 10 guides because I got more coming out. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys all in the next episode. Bye-bye.